Hi there, this is Pastor Ishola here and Doris Famelusi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Rock Church, where you'll find engaging contents that would uplift your spirit. And whilst you're here, remember, turn on your notification, leave a comment for us, subscribe to our channel, and share this broadcast if it's a blessing. God bless you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause tonight. Let's give the Lord a round of applause tonight. Amen. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. 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 And amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, Father, we just honor you. Lord, we are tabernacling at your word. And we're asking for entrance. We're asking for access tonight. We're asking, oh God, that you talk to us. That you bring us to that place. Because what we're focused on in this quarter is multiplication. What we're focused on in this month is financial increase. Financial rewards. Father, Lord, those two key things bring us to that place where we begin to see these things manifest in our lives teach us the way to get to them show us lead us in the name of jesus lord we thank you and we'll bless you lord let jesus be glorified tonight let the devil be put to shame and let the people of god be liberated and let the people of god be lifted up in the name of jesus amen 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 and amen Hallelujah. Amen. Are you guys ready for tonight? Yes, sir. Glory to Jesus. So for the next 30 minutes, I am going to be teaching or sharing on what I've titled the tool of faithfulness. Wow. You know, the songs for tonight, I don't know how they chose it, but, <laughs> but for that, that just, that just the tool of faithfulness. You see, we're looking at multiplication, but there are tools that make for multiplication. There are things we need to be consistent about. There are things that we need to be concerned or to really settle on that helps us to arrive at the place where we begin to see the multiplication, the multiplying power of God, the multiplying benefits of God, the multiplying goodness of God in our lives. And one of those tools is the word faithfulness. Somebody say faithfulness. faithfulness. Come on, if you say like you mean it, say faithfulness. faithfulness. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage those who are watching with us online, please share this broadcast because so many people in your sphere of influence need to understand or uh, to know about the tool of faithfulness. Amen. Amen. So faithfulness in this time is very crucial as we continue to look at the subject of multiplication from God's perspective. Remember that what we're teaching, what we're looking at, we're looking at multiplication from God's perspective perspective somebody say God's perspective so not your perspective not the perspective of the world but God's own perspective and we're looking at faithfulness we're looking at the subject of multiplication so faithfulness is always one of God's basis for reward if you see someone who's been rewarded by God what God is simply saying to you about that person is that they have been faithful can I say that again if you see God rewarding someone, if you see someone being rewarded in whatever area of their lives by the living God, what God is trying to say to us about that person is that they have been faithful. So their faithfulness have brought them to a place where they deserve to be rewarded. Hallelujah. And I see many of you get into that place where you deserve to be rewarded. Even in this season in Jesus' name. And so to be considered diligent, because you know, the Bible says God is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So to be considered diligent, you would have proven yourself faithful. You cannot be diligent without being faithful. Hallelujah. Where you see faithfulness in, in display, diligence would always be in display. Show me a man who is diligent, and I will tell you a man who is faithful. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory to God. So there's no diligence without the proof of faithfulness. 
So multiplication, therefore, in this quarter would actually be on the basis of faithfulness. Somebody say on the basis of faithfulness. And so tonight I want to be uh, uh, going further uh, in a part one of this, of this teaching because it's going to be a series. And I want to be talking about the revelation of faithfulness. Some of us need to catch a revelation of faithfulness. The reason why some people are struggling with faithfulness is because they do not have a revelation of what it means to be faithful. When you catch a revelation of faithfulness and you begin to function in that revelation, you will become a faithful man or woman of God. Amen. So what revelation from God's perspective can we grasp from the word faithfulness? So let me just describe the word faithfulness simply as this. It means faith operating in its fullness. Just simple. Faith operating in what? Full capacity. Full capacity. Faith operating at full capacity. Going ahead of myself, and the Bible says, through this faith, kind of faith, the elders obtained what? Not, not half measured faith. Not weak faith. Bible talked about Abraham. said he was not weak in faith, but was strong. Not considering his own body dead. Not even considering the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he was fully persuaded. That's what the fullness of faith will bring you into. Of faithfulness will bring, you to, will bring you to a place where you're fully persuaded. Yeah. You don't see the results before you begin to walk faithfully. You walk faithfully to see the results. Hallelujah. Amen. Because some of us wait to say, okay, let me see the results and then I'll become faithful. Uh-uh, you're going to be waiting forever. Look at your neighbor and say, you're going to be waiting forever. He rewards those that diligently. Faithfulness. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. So faithfulness simply means faith operating in its fullness or at full capacity in the life of the one who is described as being faithful. The faithfulness of God therefore can be seen in his dealings with individuals and nations all through scripture. When God called Abraham, Genesis 12, he gave his word of promise to Abraham about what he, God, was going to do with Abraham's life. And God's faithfulness to that word of promise brought the word to pass amen so god will not make a demand on you or require what he himself is not able to demonstrate so when god is making a demand you must understand that god himself has, has first gone ahead to demonstrate that in your life who can say with me god has not been faithful to me who can lift up their hands and say god has not been faithful but how many of you can say god has been faithful <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. You may, not have had, you may not have your millions that you're hoping to have, but you can trace the faithfulness of God. You may not have the kind of house you want to have yet, but you can trace the faithfulness of God. You may not have the kind of uh, 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 um, job you want to have right now, but you can trace in that which you are, you can trace the faithfulness of God. At every level of your life, at every phase of your life, you can trace out if you're not wicked, the faithfulness of God. I, I, I'm serious. If you're not a wicked servant. Remember what he said to that week? He said, thou wicked servant. He said, master, I know that you try to reap where you have not sown. Who gave him that kind of story? Who told him that? Obviously, it's the devil. Because God is not known. And even Jesus, the master, did not even argue with him. He said, but at least you could have put this in the bank to bring an interest say you're a wicked servant only wicked servants do not realize how faithful god has been to them the children of israel were considered as stubborn hearted why because they refused to regard and take stock of the faithfulness of god in their lives so that every challenge that they faced what did they do they rebelled and they murmured and they complained you know, if they are just simply gone to God and say, Lord, we lack this, give us this. If they are simply done that, God would have done it for them without any question. But because they approached God with complaints and murmuring, God regarded them as what? Stubborn-hearted, stiff-necked. Why? Because ungratefulness will make you murmur and complain. And when you're ungrateful, it means you have no regard for the faithfulness of God. You cannot trace the faithfulness of God in your life. 
There are times we need to sit down and take stock. I want to challenge you at the end of every year, sit down and take stock of the faithfulness of God. The things that God did not allow to happen to you, start from there. Glory to God. I said glory to God. And then start from the things that he did do in your life. Amen. Somebody say God is faithful. Come on, say it again. Say God is faithful. So the faithfulness of God is first demonstrated in his word of promise to us. He gave Abraham a word of promise. Abraham followed that word and he saw the manifestation of that word. And do you know that that word that he gave to Abraham, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You know that scripture has been fulfilled in you. You are a fulfillment of that scripture on a bigger scale. Glory to God. Because the Bible says if you belong to Abraham, you are, um, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And you're an heir according to the promise. It says, in you shall all families in the earth be blessed. And God meant it. And that was fulfilled through Jesus Christ and us coming into Christ or the, 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 the openness of salvation to everyone fulfilled that scripture. So the whole earth is blessed through the salvation that Jesus gave to us. Amen. But whether we then, you know, take advantage of that, that's another question for another day. Glory to Jesus. And as we move towards the end of the age, when Jesus will return to receive the church unto himself, everything that we see going on today, God had already announced in his word over 2,000 years ago. How many of you know that the Bible itself is a demonstration of the faithfulness of God to, towards humanity? Because if you want to know what's going to happen in another 20 years, go and open your Bible. You'll see it there. Glory to Jesus. So that's why I laugh at people when they say the Bible is outdated. I'm like, outdated, but it's telling you what is to come. And you're telling me it's outdated. I don't get it. I'm confused. <laughs> Praise God. Even the ones who don't believe God know how to go to the book of Revelation to see what's going to happen. And yet they come and tell you it's outdated. They know how to go to it. Glory to God. I said glory to God. God said in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 9 to 11, He says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And as my thoughts, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Verse 10 says, For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it to bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Hallelujah. I so much like that scripture because God will always give seed to the sower. And in giving seed to the sower, bread will also always be given to the eater. So you're a sower and you're an, eat, you're, you're an eater. And in the two places that it says that, it never sw swapped it. It didn't say bread to the eater, then seed to the sower. So you don't eat before you sow, you sow before you eat. Is somebody here with me right now? Come and say, I sow before I eat. Have you ever seen a farmer that does not sow and expects to harvest what to eat? It's impossible. So you always have to sow before you eat. So it says, seed to the sower, bread to the eater. It says, so shall my word be. So if you cannot see snow, go back up in the same manner or form that it came down. Know that the word of God over your life can never fail. Amen. That's what he's saying. He says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it will never return back to me void. In other words, it's not going to return back to me empty. Praise God. It says, as rain comes, if rain does not go back up in the same form that it came down, then God's word to you can never, ever fail. And if I said, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, and my ways are higher than your ways. How many of you know God's ways are higher than our ways? But we begin to understand his ways when we align ourselves with his ways. So when we receive the word of God into our hearts, it becomes seed in the soil of our hearts. And the outcome of that seed is then determined by the state of our hearts at the time. Pastor Doris preached, you know, was it last Sunday or last Friday, Friday and Sunday, I believe. She shared so much on the parable of the sower and she came to a place where she said, it is about the heart. Somebody say, it's about the heart. Repeating what she said, it's about what? The heart. Seed sown. When Jesus was explaining that parable, he said, the, the sower is, uh, 
uh, I can't remember who he said the sower, but then the sower went to say, sow the seed. The sower is the farmer. How many of you know that the seed and the sower are the same? So the issue is not the seed. The issue is the soil. Hallelujah. It's not the seed. So it's not a bad seed. It's not a quarter bad seed. The seed is the same. The farmer or the sower is the same. But the soil is the issue. And Jesus said the soil is the state of the heart. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. So a prepared soil would always bring forth a great harvest, harvest of good fruits. An unprepared soil would always abort the process of the seed becoming a great harvest of good fruits. Every, the potential in the seeds that were sown in that parable were the same. Each seed carried equal potential. But the heart that received it determined how the seed prospered. Amen. Amen. So you see why I cannot blame you if I'm going through. If, I can't come and blame you and say you're the reason why I'm not prospering. So you know, some people like to shift to responsibility. Say you're the cause of my misery. No, you yourself are the cause of your misery. Because even if that person was the cause of your misery, how could you give them enough, that kind of permission to determine the cause of your life? No human being, no matter how big they are, has the... The, the, the power to determine your outcome in life. So in some places where we call it, they say it's from your village. Uh -uh. It ain't from your village. They're not, no one is trying to stop you. Your mentality is what is stopping you. If you believe you're being stopped, you will be stopped. You know, I mean, you know people go about, some people go about, they're very suspicious of everybody. Uh -huh. What is it? They've come again. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What did, what did they want? Well, they've come again. Nobody is changed. He said the wicked flee when no man pursues. Glory to God. I said glory to God. A prepared soil. The seed has equal potential. The soil that it falls on is what determines how the seed prospers. So the seed prospering, the seed of God's word prospering in your life is how you take it how you believe it, and how you run with the seed of the word of God. Glory to God. So come and say, I'm a prepared soil. Oh, say it like you mean it. Say, I am a prepared soil. So there's some insights that I want to share with you tonight. I hope I'm going to be able to um, finish going through them. Otherwise, I'm going to carry on on Sunday. There are some notable insights about the word faithfulness from God's perspective. Remember that the basis for a word, one of the strongest features or one of the strongest, strongest tools is faithfulness. So the basis for reward. So you need to have notable insights. Insights that you meditate upon or about the word faithfulness from God's perspective or from a scriptural pers perspective. And number one is this. Faithfulness always starts with what you have, not what you don't have. Lord, if you promote me, I'll sow. If you give me that job, I'll be able to evangelize. If you always put in the thing in God's court, that God, if you did that, but God is saying to you that if you do this, then I will. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it always starts with what you have. It, always, it does not start with what you don't have. Oh, they're able to be so helpful because they have all the time in the whole world. Lord, you've lifted them up. You've given them rest. Therefore, they have the time. Uh-uh. You don't get rest and have time. You have time, then you get rest. It says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest not i'll give you rest then you come to me not i'll give you rest first and then you come uh -uh. you come first then god gives you rest so you don't have time then do you do to have time whatever you plan for you execute whatever you make up your mind for you carry out nothing stops you isn't it wonderful? I've said it here before. Now, anything that is so uppermost in our mind, we always know how to create time for those things. 
We always find a way. No matter how busy we are, we find a way. Hallelujah. If you're determined to escape to Jamaica tonight, you will find a way. <laughs> no, it's true. If the determination is in your spirit, you will find what? A way. Whatever it is that your heart is set to do. Why did God have to go down and stop the Tower of Babel? He said, behold, nothing can be constrained from this one that their hearts have determined to do. Their hearts were determined to do it. They were not plain about it. They were serious about it. So God knows seriousness when he sees seriousness. Hallelujah. So it says, come, let us go and stop them. Because if we don't stop them, they will not. And the only thing God could do to stop them was to bring confusion. God used it for a good cause. But Satan is using it for a terrible cause today. The biggest weapon of Satan in, in anyone's life is to bring confusion. Because when you're confused, you stop in your tracks. You don't even know where you're going. Right, left, front, backwards. You don't know. You're stuck in one place. But once you have direction and you are determined... Nothing stops you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you believe that, say amen. amen. So faithfulness always starts with the little that I have in my hand. It does, not, it does not place a demand on what I do not have, but what I do have. The, the phrase or the sentence, I have nothing to give, has no place in God's kingdom. Peter proved it. He says, silver or good, we don't have. Yeah, you may not have some things, but there's what you have. Say, but what I have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Come on, say, I always have something. Come on, say with me. Say, I always have something. God is too faithful to leave any child of his empty. You are not empty. It's impossible for you to be empty. It's impossible. If it's a word of encouragement, you've got it. Hallelujah. If it is a smile that changes someone's environment, you've got it. <laughs> you are not empty. It's impossible for, so, something, for, for, for a, 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 someone made in the likeness and image of God to be empty. Say, I do not have to give. It's impossible. It's impossible. There's always something that you can give. It has no place. So never say again in your life, I have nothing to give. It has no place in God's kingdom. Peter knew that at that point in time, they didn't have money. But there was something that he recognized that they had. They had the authority of Christ. They had the ability to work signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. And they released that which, God, God, which they realized they had, and it worked. Because they placed a demand on what they had. There is always something in your hand or in your heart, or in your life that God can draw from to move you forward. There's always something. Look at the case of Moses. After God spoke to them, Moses said, oh, I cannot speak, I cannot do it. And God said, what do you, he said, they will not believe me. What do you have in your hand? So a lot of times for some of us, God is asking you, what do you have in your hand? The prophet's widow. After she complained, the debtors are come, da, 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 da. The, the next thing the prophet was asking, say, what do you want me to do for you? Okay, what do you have in your house? So if it's not what you have in your hand, it's what you have in your house. <laughs> Says, what do you have in your house? Glory to God. God will always start from what you have, not what you don't have. Because what you have, when it's released the way God wants you to release them, then it creates room for what you don't have. Hallelujah. The widow of Zarephath said, what is left is this morsel of meat or bread for my son and I, and our plan is to eat and die tonight. But the prophet said, tonight is not your day of death. If you obey this first, thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. It was also a demand on what she had. Some of you, God is changing your plans tonight. Your personal plan. Because that widow's personal plan, that just came to me, that widow's personal plan was to eat and die. So some of you, that plan is changed right now. Yeah. Say, thank you, Lord, for changing my plan. Oh, come on. Say, they say, thank you, Lord, for changing my plan. 
Whatever that plan is. Hallelujah. David was so confident that you can never be empty. He said, I was young, now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That means you are never empty. Never empty as a child of God. Never ever empty. Never empty. We only appear to be empty when we do not know or value what we have. <laughs> do you know that if God put that thing in you or give, gave you the, 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 the favor to have that thing in your hand, no matter how little it is, do you know that that thing that you have, that you're despising, is as valuable as heaven itself? Because that's what will bring your heaven down to you. Hallelujah. It is as valuable as what? As heaven itself. So people that say, I do not have to give, they only appear empty because they do not know what or value what they have. So that's number one. Faithfulness always starts with what I have. Say with me, faithfulness starts with what I have. Not what I don't have. Number two. To a child of God, faithfulness is not a choice but a necessity. You cannot say, as a child of God, if you really want to advance in the kingdom, oh, it's if I like, I'll be faithful. If I like, I won't be faithful. No, you don't have a choice. Come and say, I do not have a choice. Oh, come and say it. Say, I do not have a choice. Because God is big on faithfulness. When he came, he says, well done, thou faithful and good servant. God used the word faithful. He didn't say thou victorious. He said faithful. He didn't say thou, thou winner servant. He said what? Faithful. He could have used many other words that we use today. But he chose the word what? Faithful. Because if you're faithful, you'll be victorious. If you're faithful, you'll be a winner. If you're faithful, you'll be on top. If you're faithful, you'll be the head and not the tail. If you're faithful, you'll be above only and not beneath. Just a matter of time. Hallelujah. Just focus on your faithfulness. If I've made up my mind, the Lord, I'm not focusing on multiplication. I'm focusing on faithfulness. Because when I am faithful, I'm not going to struggle to multiply. Yes. Do you understand this? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. So faithfulness is not a choice. It is a necessity. If we really want to enjoy kingdom benefits, we have got to be big on faithfulness. We've got to be faithful people, consistently committed to God until our very last breath. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Number three, faithfulness interprets undying commitment to the process, to the mission and the vision, no matter the condition. I'm going to repeat myself. <laughs> Faithfulness interprets undying commitment to the process. How many of you know it's a process? The journey of faithfulness is a process. That's why you, you have what you call the test of faithfulness. It's a process. Abraham, God woke him up one time and said, That son, that your son Isaac, take him over to a mountain that I shall show you and offer him there for me as a sacrifice. That was a test of faithfulness. A process. No wonder he's called our father of faith. He earned that title. It wasn't just placed on him by his demonstration of faithfulness. The Bible says about that, that situation. He said, it, it, the Bible said, he said, for Abraham knew, he was fully convinced that God was able to raise Isaac from the dead. In other words, he was giving the promise back to God. Knowing that God was, even if he had to kill Isaac, he was expecting God to raise him from the dead. Woo! He wasn't with the mindset, ah, God, no, Isaac, go and hide, go and hide. Where is Isaac? God, I don't know. I don't know where he went. He just, he disappeared. He just ran away. I, I don't know, God. I don't know. God, you find him. I, I don't know where Isaac is. <laughs> Abraham did say that. I wonder if he had told Sarah. I wonder what Sarah would have said. Say, eh? Kihu, let God come. Let him, I want to see his face. That mouth that God used to say, go and kill him. I want to, I want to hear. Say, eh, God told you, he hasn't told me. This boy ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm letting you know we can be like that sometimes. Eh? Say, this boy ain't going nowhere. What? Kill? 
sacrifice? Where, where, which God? That is Satan. But God, Abraham knew God enough. See, that's why it's good to walk with God. Amen. It's great to walk with God. Because when you walk with God, you cannot miss the voice of God. And when you don't miss the voice of God, you cannot miss your place in destiny. Those who miss their places in destiny is because they miss the voice of God. You can't, if you walk with God, you can't miss the Abraham knew this was God. He didn't even try to bind the devil. He said, Lord, where? He says in his heart, what was going on in his heart was that this God that's asking me to do this must have a bigger plan. And of course, God did have a bigger plan. And then when he tried to do it, an angel stopped him and said, Abraham, don't do that. He says, now God, and God spoke to that, 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 um, that angel, said, now I know. See, there's a test of faithfulness that will come your way that will make God say over you, now. And at that place, everything changes. Did you notice that everything changed after them for Abraham? Everything changed. Everything changed. Everything changed. Hallelujah. Abraham saw today. Jesus said, he said, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Because of the demonstration of faithfulness, God showed Abraham everything. I'm sure Abraham even saw rapture. God showed him. He says he rejoiced. Woo! You mean this is the seed, Lord, that you promised me. So some people travel to the end from the beginning. They already saw the end from the beginning. What makes them different from God? The Bible says he declares the end. So God showed them everything. Infinito. Somebody say infinito. Is that Spanish? Is that, is that Italian? I don't know what that is. <laughs> infinito. God showed them everything. David too saw a lot. He will be singing some just prophesying what was going to happen. That's faithfulness. He says, I've seen a man after my heart. So when we're talking faithfulness, heart matter. Faithfulness, heart matter. Well done, thou faithful and good servant. I'm going to stop here tonight and I'll carry on on Sunday. Come on, rise to your faith. Hallelujah. Rise to your faith tonight. Rise to your faith. Rise to your faith. So there's so much to unpack from the word faithfulness. There's so much to unpack from that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know we've talked about reward, we've talked about money, we've talked about a whole lot of stuff. I know we've seen, you know, we're trusting God for a whole lot of things. But have you considered your faithfulness? Have you considered your measure of faithfulness? Can God, if Jesus were to appear today to you, right now in this assembly, when it comes to you, will he say, well done, thou faithful and good servant? Will that be the words that will come out of the mouth of Jesus? You know, lift up your hands tonight and say, Lord... <laughs> I, I want to be faithful. I, 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 want to, well, I want the word faith. I want my demonstration in your kingdom. My act in your kingdom. My life in your kingdom. To reveal the word faithfulness. To reveal the word faithfulness. In the name of Jesus. Come and open up your mind and begin to talk to God. And say, Lord, let my life reveal faithfulness. Let my life speak faithfulness. Let my commitment speak faithfulness, Lord. Faithfulness in the heart. Faithfulness in the spirit faithfulness in every area of my life that there's nothing too big that I cannot lay on the altar for your sake Lord at your command at your instruction let my heart be totally sold out to pleasing you Lord that faithfulness will not be a struggle in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we thank you tonight Lord I honor you tonight Lord I give you praise tonight thank you Holy Spirit thank you Holy Spirit Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And so, Father, we honor you tonight for your word. Faithfulness, indeed, is a word that we need to be big on in our lives. That we need to settle on, O oh God. Lord, let our lives begin to demonstrate the kind of faithfulness that pleases you in the name of Jesus let our lives begin to show forth that kind of faithfulness that magnifies and glorifies your name Lord 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, let it be that at any time you come to us, what we're going to hear you say is well done, thou faithful and good servant. Let our lives be built up to this level, O oh God, that we can be termed faithful servants. You said to Aaron and Miriam, said, there is no faithful in all my house. Moses, the meekest and the most faithful upon the face of the earth. Lord, we want to be people that you can look at and say, have you considered my servant who is faithful, who fears evil and loves good? Father, we want our lives to demonstrate this kind of faithfulness to you, to your word, to your kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the praise tonight. Be magnified for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a round of applause tonight and just worship him in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>